Now, peers are expected to renew their attack on the government's proposed controversial changes to the welfare system when the legislation returns to the House of Lords shortly. Ministers have already had to overturn a series of defeats over their proposals, which include capping benefits at £26,000 a year for each household. Well, we're going to talk now to Sue Marsh, who's a disability campaigner. She writes a blog, The Diary of a Benefit Scrounger, which charts her experiences of uh, dealing with welfare cuts uh, and disability living allowances. She's uh, in our Brighton studio. Thanks for being with us. Um, the, the, the peers keep fighting this, but uh, it's really become a game of ping-pong between the House of Lords and the House of Commons. And the government have made it pretty clear they're determined to win out on their uh, welfare changes. So what's the point of continual resistance in the House of Lords? I think that's the problem. I think, I think perhaps it's the fact that the government have made it so clear that they aren't prepared to compromise on the amendments that Lords worked so hard on. Um, I think that the way they did that was to, to simply reject all of the amendments out of hand, amendments that protected disabled children, cancer patients, um, and it was that rejection out of hand that, that has made peers really quite cross and I very much hope we'll, we'll see them carry on fighting for, for, the, for the bill. Now, a lot of, we know a lot of people are actually behind this move by the government. A lot of our viewers support it. Um, what would you say to them? What, I mean, give us a couple of examples of where you think that these welfare changes are just unfair. I think you mentioned the benefit cap when we came on, and that's really, really all the public have heard about this bill. There are measures the public support, like the benefit cap and universal credit. Um, when it gets to the details, I think that's where the problem lies. For instance, um, one of the details is a proposal to, to limit the time that, that people on, on um, incapacity benefit or sickness benefits, ESA, can claim benefits for. Now, it isn't reliant on whether they're better, isn't reliant on whether they found a job. The government have admitted that. It's, it's purely a cost-saving measure. And I think when you're trying to cut costs, you have to be really, really careful that vulnerable people aren't going to be affected and the Lords aren't convinced that that's the case. They are, you know, crossbenchers particularly, uh, Labour peers are convinced that this is going to hurt vulnerable people. And you talk about the benefit cap, but that is, mm. that is the reason a lot of people do support these measures, mm. because they see, well, you know, they say, why should, why should anybody have benefits totalling, you know, more than 26,000 pre-tax, that's £35,000 a year, that's a lot of money. Yeah, when you look at the measure, I mean, I, I, I don't really talk about the benefit cap very much. When you look at the measure, what we have to ask ourselves is, is it going to stop dependency in welfare? Is it going to stop a dependency culture? And actually, the benefit cap probably isn't going to do that. What it's going to do is force lots of, of poorer families out of London. Uh, that's not really what I'm here to, to argue about. I'm very concerned about disabled people, people living in great poverty. And some of these measures just haven't been thought through. Um, expecting cancer patients to look for work when they're undergoing chemotherapy is something that I don't think most people in the country support. I don't think cutting benefits for profoundly disabled children is something most people support. It's the details of this policy, not the headline-grabbing benefit caps, not the headline-grabbing universal credit. It's the details that peers and campaigners like myself are so concerned about. Um, we're just... I'm just going to... Stay with us, but I'm just going to bring you some breaking news, actually, on this mm. that I'd be interested in your reaction to, mm. because we're hearing from our colleagues at Westminster that the government's actually indicated it will offer a series of concessions two peers uh, in the House of Lords in an attempt to prevent any more defeats to its welfare reform bill. Uh, this is the Conservative leader of the House, who is mm. Lord Strathclyde, yeah. uh, and he says the government will be offering what he calls assurances or reassurances to peers mm. uh, during the debate. Now, the Minister for Work and Pensions, Lord Freud, in the House of Lords, has said the government would hold a review in 2015 to make sure the most severely disabled children are getting the right support. Mm. Um, I don't know whether that uh, will please you or relieve you, Sue Marsh, or what will be your reaction if there's any kind of concessions at all from the government? Obviously, concessions are good. We, I followed this bill all the way through. I followed it all the way through the Commons and all the way through the Lords. We've heard of concessions before. Um, for instance, I, I don't think it's acceptable to subject disabled children to cuts that might harm them and then say, but we'll look in three years' time and see whether that harm's been great or not. What we would like them to do is simply pause on some of the issues that, that we think will cause damage. We would like them to pause, we would like them to hold reviews, uh, we would like them to reconsider and to be honest I think a lot of us, not just campaigners but peers, charities, are at the stage where their reassurances have not meant very much. It hasn't got us to a place where everyone can support this bill. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm glad if there are genuine concessions but, but the government must make genuine concessions now. If they don't make genuine concessions, I think they've, they've doubled out so many times people aren't going to, to, to put any credence.
points into that. OK, well, we'll try and get more detail on what those possible concessions may be. But for the moment, Sue Marsh, Disability Campaigner, thank you very much uh, for being with Thanks. us on BBC News. Thank you.